Roland Martin is at it again, folks. That's right. It was one thing when he came after me, but now he seems to have started a beef with Brianna Joy Gray. Pow, 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 pow. We're going to get into this exchange and then I'm going to explain to you why Roland Martin is really angry, what he's really upset about. I'm telling you again, we live in a cartoon. Let's get into it. It all started with this tweet from Crystal Ball. Some Dems are finally admitting Bernie would have won. And she is referring to uh, Chris Murphy. So Chris Murphy, I believe he's in Connecticut. Chris Murphy has finally come around after all these years, right? And he's finally admitting that, you know what? Maybe Bernie Sanders was right. Maybe the whole populist idea was correct. Well, Roland Martin retweeted Crystal Ball and said, no, Crystal, Bernie Sanders would not have won. His black support was tepid. Y'all are still living in a delusional world. Was his black support tepid? That's not what I saw on the ground. Bernie Sanders did really well with young black voters. These are the things that Roland Martin doesn't want to mention. He doesn't want uh, his, his, his dim supporters to know, right? He's one of the people, remember, he gave those debate questions to Hillary Clinton. So his beef with Bernie Sanders goes all the way back to 2016, not 2020, okay? Going back to 2016 when he was handing Hillary Clinton debate questions. So keep that in mind. So Roly Poe has to come in and say, no, 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 black support, okay? Brianna Joy Gray, I, I think she did this best. She retweeted Roland Martin and she said, Bernie's black support was always higher than Kamala's. And here we go with receipts. This was from The Intercept. Bernie Sanders is beating Kamala Harris two to one among black Democratic primary voters, new poll finds. This is true for those of us who remember this. It goes on to say, here is another receipt. Sanders surpasses Biden among African-American voters. See, the numbers were always there, right? But again, that's not who the establishment wanted. The dim leadership didn't want Bernie Sanders. They didn't even know if Biden was going to beat Trump, but they knew that Biden would beat Bernie. So that was why they said, let's, let's push Bernie, let's push Biden, even though Bernie Sanders had already won New Hampshire at that point in time, and he had already won Nevada. It was when it got to South Carolina where that race started to change. And that was because Clyburn said, we're going to go out there and we're going to vote for Joe Biden. And all those black folk listened to Joe Biden, I mean, listened to um, Clyburn and said, okay, we'll do what you say and we're going to vote for Joe Biden. And what Roland Martin, and I don't want to say doesn't understand, he understands. Let's be very clear. Roland Martin knows exactly what happened, and he knows that Bernie Sanders was beating Kamala Harris with black support in 2020. Kamala Harris, at one point during the Dem primary, had 1% from black voters. So Roland Martin knows this. So I hear a lot of people online and they're saying like, how does he not know this? How does he not understand? No, 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 no. We have to change our framing. Roland Martin knows exactly what you're talking about. He is not stupid. He is not unaware. He is not uninformed. He is paid to pretend like he does not know. He is a Democrat party operative. He is paid to pretend that what you're saying is not true. Everyone has to understand that. I know how this game is played. So let me show you what he does. So he comes back to Bree and he says, by the way, Bree, you cite 2020 stories. What actually happened when people voted? Y'all always skip over that. So when people voted, Bernie Sanders won New Hampshire, he won Nevada, and when it came to South Carolina, he came in second place. So what, what, what do you mean what happened when people voted? And I would argue he only came in second place because Clyburn told everybody to vote for Biden. And listen, I went, I graduated from college in South Carolina. I never understood why people had this admiration for Jim Clyburn. Jim Clyburn lives very well while most of the people in his district don't. 
But because he's older black guy and he's like, I'm progressive and I fought for things. South Carolina has the oldest electorate. So when we tell you that Bernie Sanders had did really well with young black voters, you have to remember there's a difference when you go to South Carolina because they have the oldest electorate. Older black voters tend to vote for who? Those that come through the black church that already have that tight relationship with people in the black church. Jim Clyburn has people on speed dial that are a part of black Greek organizations and he has the pastors on speed dial. He already has an in. He's already got that connection. So whoever he tells them to support, that's who they're going to support. Fish fry. So that's rolling trying to do a, a clap back, right? You see what I'm, you see what I'm saying? Okay. So let me, let me ask you this question, Roland. What happened when people voted this time for Kamala Harris presidency? What happened this time? She lost. So what are you talking about? Now, Bree responds and she said he came in second, unlike Kamala who had to drop out before her home state voted because she was getting Molly whooped by Andrew Yang. And this is true. Andrew Yang was beating Kamala Harris in her own state. We have to go back and revisit that dim 2020 primary at some point. Andrew Yang was beating Kamala Harris in her own state. And people like Roland Martin wanted you to believe that this was a great candidate. She never was. Never was. He went as far as to even mock, he's mocking Palestinian people, right? There's an article by Politico that said, Dearborn's Arab Americans didn't just vote for Trump, they punished Harris. He retweets this and he says, holla at me in six months, Dearborn. We tried to tell y'all. That's the coldest thing. That's some cold shit that you can say to somebody. Isn't that cold? People whose lifelines have gone through a genocide. That's some really cold shit. So Brie claps back and says, this is incredibly offensive, deeply shameful. You voted for the woman whose administrated administration perpetrated a genocide is still funding an ethnic cleansing campaign. And instead of fighting the people behind this, you're dancing on the graves of victims, vile work. Because this is what Roland Martin is paid to do. Kamala is his friend. That's his friend. He's there to protect Kamala the same way he was protecting Hillary Clinton so much to the point that he would give her debate questions. He's a Democrat operative. That's what Roland Martin is. To the point about Bernie Sanders and black support, what people like Roland Martin tend to leave out is even though Joe Biden won South Carolina again because Clyburn said vote for Joe Biden and people follow Clyburn, what he tends to leave out is that those Southern states don't turn blue anyway. In the general election, South Carolina isn't blue. Florida wasn't blue. North Carolina hasn't been blue since Obama. Tennessee is not blue. So people like Roland, what they try to use as the excuse is that, well, J Bernie won South Carolina. Yeah, in the dim primary, uh, Biden, excuse me, Biden won South Carolina. In the dim primary, Biden wasn't going to win South Carolina in the general election. So why were you sitting here acting like he was? It's not really about Bree, though. He not really mad at her. Let me tell you what he mad about. Get ready to laugh. I hope you guys are ready for some chuckles. This is why Roland Martin is really mad. The next leader of the Democratic National Committee has to come in with a big ass trash can. Mm. I think the next leader of the Democratic National Committee has to make it clear 
that there are consultants and folks under contract who should be given their walking papers. Because the advice in the council that was given was shameful. The DNC, even though the DNC chair cannot control PACs, Future Ford needs to get called out. How are you the designated PAC for the campaign? And I travel this country, and I was in battleground states, and I was watching television and listening to radio, and y'all supposedly were running this stuff. It was amazing how I didn't see it. Mm. But I saw lots of Make America Great Again PAC and Trump campaign commercials. Mm -hmm. So now it has to deal with advertising, right? I saw Kamala Harris commercials. That's not why she lost. Everybody want to point fingers at everybody else except for Kamala Harris, right? This is why he really mad, guys. He's not really mad at Bree. Honestly, he ain't even really mad at me. He's mad because his friend lost. That's what this is really about. Because this is this is two for you, man. This this Hillary, this Kamala. And had it not been for the pandemic, Biden wouldn't have won either. You would have been 0 and 3. So I think that's one. Two, you, you've got to have a leader who can communicate in the streets and the suites. Mm -hmm. You've got to have somebody who is aggressive enough to go on media outlets and not just MSNBC. Mm -hmm. So here we go. Everybody listening to this? This is why he mad. And look at the bottom. It says convicted felon elected as 47th president. Felon. There they go with that felon again, right? This is a class issue. But showing your ass up to this show, to Sears XM radio shows, going to other digital shows and podcasts and go actually having a media strategy. Yeah. It means hiring a team to put back together the black political infrastructure that was obliterated when Obama was president. Mm -hmm. That has to happen uh, as well. And you also have got to have a DNC and that's the DNC. Republicans are going to control the Senate. Democrats, Chuck Schumer cannot be the minority leader. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't give a damn how much money Chuck Schumer can raise. Mm. Chuck Schumer no longer can be the Democrat minority leader. Now, isn't this, this the same thing many of us in independent media have been saying for a long time that some of these people need to retire? Haven't we been saying these things? But when I said these things on Twitter, I got attacked by Roland Martin. So what, 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 what the what? So Roland can say it, but we can't say it. Roland knew that we were right. Roland Martin knows this party ain't shit. He knows. He just don't want to hear from us. He wants to be the one to say it. Democrat operative. Mm -hmm. In the United States Senate. His time is done. <laughs> <laughs> On the House side, I don't want to see Nancy Pelosi's ass again on television doing interviews. <laughs> it's time for you to go. Hakeem Jeffries is the is not if he if, if Democrats gain regain the House he becomes the majority he becomes Speaker of the House if Republicans control it he's the, he's the um, minority leader Nancy it's time for you to go home to your husband no 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 I'm saying that for a reason because you have to understand you cannot continue to have. 75, 78, 79, 80, 81, 82 year old people laying out your strategy when you're trying to reach demos and 
when Nancy goes and she only goes, she don't do black media. Because no, she, she damn sure didn't do black media when I asked for speaker. Oh, see, it's all coming out now, ladies and gentlemen, because Kamala lost. Now it's all coming out. Now, Nancy, don't do black media. Nancy, it's time for you to go home to your husband. But when we said these things, we were called right wing. We were called grifters. Roland Martin told me I don't know anything about politics. He told me I was stupid when I said those things. And he always seems to really come after women. I've noticed that much. But now, because Kamala lost, now it's okay to say it. He, but he has to be the one to say it with his gatekeeping ass, right? This is the gatekeeper of the keepers. But she'll hop on MSNBC show. And thank goodness we ain't going to see on Andrea Mitchell. Because Andrea Mitchell tired ass done with her show. I'm, I'm, I'm saying this because <laughs> you cannot put new wine in old wine skins. You, you cannot have these folks who are still trying to use a playbook that's 20, 25 years old when literally what is facing us is totally different. Mm, that's true. It, it, it <laughs> simply cannot happen. And <laughs> this is also the moment where the Congressional Black Caucus has to truly wield its power and put some of your fellow Democrats' asses in line. Hmm. You are the largest caucus in the Democratic Party. You should be setting the agenda. You should be leading the fight. Right. JB is correct. If Roland Martin would have actually heard us out, and I told him multiple times, instead of yelling at me on Twitter, why don't you come onto my show? If he would have actually listened to what those of us in independent media were saying and what we were hearing from people on the ground, you guys saw I, I interviewed people on the ground. If he would have actually paid attention to what we were trying to tell people, he would have been prepared for this moment. He would have not been as heartbroken, as uh, shocked, or I don't know. I don't know what the hell he was thinking going into the election, but he would have not been as surprised if he would have listened to some of us. But because he thinks he knows everything, this is an ego moment. He doesn't want to listen to anybody else. He don't want to listen to us. It's funny. He was like, ah, oh, you YouTubers. Motherfucker, you on YouTube too. It kills me when people say stuff like that. This class is attitudes like, oh, it's different between the people who are journalists and the YouTubers. You're on YouTube. This is YouTube right now. What are you talking about? So don't pretend like, try to pretend like you above me, motherfucker. You got fired from CNN. So yeah, at one point you were over there in corporate media, but they let your ass go. You over here on YouTube, just like me. So let's stop pretending like you so much above me. Get out of here. And then we start talking about all of these different groups, CBC PAC and all these other PACs and groups. What the hell are y'all going to be funding? Politico dropped the story. Somebody leaked it. That the CBC offered up a $10 million proposal to the Harris campaign to do a bus tour and to um, and to help out uh, invest in two groups to help these various house races. It, it wasn't the Harris's campaign job to help you win house races. That's what you were supposed to do. And, 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 and the campaign turned it down. But, but, but let me be as, as real clear as possible. A CBC bus tour ain't it, y'all. What the CBC should have been saying is, sit at $10 million to black voters matter. To New Georgia, to, to, to Georgia stand up. Send to the actual groups that are on the ground. 
because the data don't lie. And let's get it. <laughs> so now we're going to get into the data. This is the funny part, too. Like, this is this is cracking me up because everybody's saying this stuff now. But when she was running, you had no criticism for our campaign. No criticism. Even I had criticism. Even I had critiques for Jill Stein's campaign. But he had no criticism. Everybody was just, oh, the campaign's great. Look at all this energy. We raised all this money. Oprah's here. Bruce Springsteen. Someone's cat. You guys had nothing to say. The moment she lost, it all comes out. Because the data don't lie. Y'all, <laughs> numbers ran. <laughs> Michigan, as of right now, and again, what did I say? Detroit, 47% turnout. Oh, my God. She lost Michigan by 81,750 votes. But no, according to you, Roland, it was just the Muslim voters in Michigan. You see, she lost Detroit. Detroit is like 80% black. She lost that. How you lose Detroit? Detroit City. Get James Brown up in here. What do he say? New Orleans, New Orleans, Detroit City, Detroit City. Living in America. Odd eye. Station to station. <laughs> I'm silly over here. Pennsylvania. I told y'all, 10% drop off in Philadelphia. Some say that comes out to be about a quarter of a million votes. She lost Pennsylvania by 130,487 votes. Mm -mm -mm. You mean the bathtub greens didn't make people want to come out and support her in Philadelphia? Wisconsin. What did I tell y'all in two, what did I tell y'all what happened in 2022? 50,000 fewer people voted in Milwaukee mm -hmm. than they did in 2020. Mm -hmm. If those 50,000 people in Milwaukee vote in 2022, Mandela Barnes is a United States Senator because Mandela Barnes lost Wisconsin by 26,000 votes. Mm -hmm. Right now, Kamala Harris is losing Wisconsin by 29,634 votes. That's UW. Nevada, down 63,114. And I'm glad he mentioned Nevada because guess what? As much as they want to blame Jill Stein, and by the way, he's still on Twitter trying to blame Jill Stein. This is him saying the data, which lets you know he knows damn well, according to the data, even if all of Jill Stein's vote went to Kamala Harris, she still loses. It's called doing basic math. Jill Stein was not on the ballot in Nevada. Over 15,000 people voted for none of these options. Over 15,000 people in Nevada voted for none of these options. So is it Jill Stein's fault that Kamala lost Nevada too? No, it was her. Do the math. She still loses with Jill Stein's votes and she still loses the popular vote. But Roland's on Twitter telling people it's Jill Stein's fault. Democrat operative. So if you look at Michigan, Wisconsin, and Pennsylvania, folks, we're talking three states, 250,000 votes. There's 250,000 votes. That's the difference between being president and going back to California. 15 million people set out. The next chair of the DNC <laughs> needs to put the map on the wall. It needs to say city by city what the turnout was. Mm -hmm. And then they should go, first of all, state by state then go county by county, city by city, and then specifically for us, go, I need to see the precincts in Milwaukee. I need to see the precincts in Philadelphia. I need to see the precincts in Charlotte. Oh, but speaking of North Carolina, damn it, can y'all please stop going to Western North Carolina. 
<laughs> do, do y'all understand that since 2020, the VP made about 18 trips to North Carolina. Yeah. One to Eastern North Carolina. That was a county, I think it's Anson County, North Carolina. That's 40% black. Trump won that county. Mm -mm -mm. How? Mm. <laughs> Y'all, this is math. Yeah. So if I. Yeah, and math and, and a part of that math is economics. A part of that math is the economy. That's why Trump was able to win some of those counties that Biden won in 2020. He flipped counties. Number one issue for people was the economy. It, it, what? And then she lost the youth vote because of Gaza. She was a poor candidate. I'm going through the data. <laughs> I'm going through the data. I'm in search of votes. And now I'm saying the data is showing who did not show up. And now I'm creating conversations and coffees and dialogues and whatever kind of sessions in those places because I'm preparing for 2026. I can tell you what, what Speaker Don Scott Virginia is already doing. Mm -hmm. I can guarantee you Don ain't waiting till the fall for the elections in Virginia. I guarantee you, I guarantee you there are going to be conversations happening in January in February, in March, in April, in critical House districts, but what they've accomplished in Virginia since Democrats took control of the House. They're not going to wait till the end of the year. Lastly, for, um, and I love somebody sitting and talking about rolling, trying to figure it out. I ain't trying to figure it out. Hell, I've been trying to tell y'all this shit for the last year. <laughs> this ain't nothing new. Yeah. I'm just telling you what the next leader has to do. Mm -hmm. Nah, bruh, you was out there kissing Kamala's ass and you were attacking anybody else on social media that was trying to warn people that she didn't have the numbers. And it was even worse under Biden. They didn't have it. This administration did not have it. So no need to get sassy with people. Jesus, yeah, you are trying to figure it out. You're trying to figure it out. You're trying to figure it out. What happened to all those, what happened to all those numbers? What happened to all those votes? A lot of people stayed home and you can't blame them. It just, it, you know, it is not, it is not on the voters to come out and support your chosen candidate, which by the way, I'll never hear him bring that up, that Kamala Harris was selected. There was no primary. There should have been a real primary, but it's not on them. It's on the candidate to appeal to the people. Bernie Sanders went to 50 states. Barack Obama went to 50 states. Somewhere along the line, politicians decided they only needed to go to the swing states. I don't know how I feel about that. I think part of the reason why Bernie Sanders was so popular and Barack Obama was so popular other than the policies that they were running on is because they had a 50 state strategy. I don't know why in the hell Kamala thought it was a good idea to go to Houston and do this rally and have Beyonce appear and it wasn't a Beyonce concert. Texas was never going to turn blue. That was wasted money to me. You don't need advisors to tell you that. It's common sense. You can look up the map yourself and you can see that Texas has been red for years. So why would you spend money there? All this money on this concert in Texas. I told you the urban folk weren't feeling her in that way. I told you that she was having a problem. How many times did I come on the show and tell you she's having problems in Philly? How many times did I come on the show and tell you, I don't know. Look at the look at her support for black people. She's struggling a little bit. Hillary Clinton received more of the black the black vote than Kamala Harris did. And Hillary lost too. Oh, and by the way, 
Another thing I want to tell you guys too, for all the people that are putting all the blame on white women, I just want to let everyone know, I went back and I looked through the numbers. Did you know that Kamala Harris received more votes from white women than Hillary Clinton did? Is it going to be the same amount as black voters? No, but it's been that way for decades. She was a weak candidate. I told you that from the start. Roland Martin is bugging and he's attacking people like Bree and me and anybody who's calling out his friend because he's a Democrat party operative. There's a reason why he gets to be in those spaces. You don't get to have interviews with Hillary Clinton and Kamala Harris like that unless you in the know, like you're in it. That's why. <laughs> yeah, Yvonne says, Savvy Sabs, the bathtub greens didn't fool anybody. <laughs> I guess not. <laughs> you better thank a union member. Oh my God. Yeah. Everyone has someone to blame, folks. I'm going to go tell you about the DNC. Uh, the DNC right now is considering Rahm Emanuel for that position. That's right. Jamie Harrison stepped down. So they're considering Rahm Emanuel, the same Rahm Emanuel that closed all of those schools in Chicago. He worked with Obama. That's who they're considering. The Democratic Party ain't learned shit. Boo! Hey guys, this was a savvy clip. If you like what you saw, hit that like button and subscribe.